Hey, and welcome. It is Kimberly. We are back in the workshop and we are continuing on this vintage chest of drawers that we had started on Tuesday. If you are um, new to join us, we welcome you. We thank you for jumping on with us. I'm going to give everybody a few minutes to um, kind of jump on with us. And uh, also welcome those who are new to this uh, broadcast. Excuse me. New to this broadcast. My name is Kimberly and I'm with Unique Finds and Furniture Designs in Kernersville, North Carolina. And I am a um, premier retailer for Dixie Belle Chalk Paint. So we do um, tips and tricks and tutorials on YouTube and all those different channels. We do YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, all of those. And we also have a blog page out there. So if you are new to this page, I welcome you. Thank you for joining us tonight and we will get started. As you, if you guys were with me on Tuesday evening, you know that I did clean this piece with our white lightning cleaner. And that is a Dixie Belle paint product. You do mix it with water. I have a little spray bottle that I mix it with and I cleaned my piece really, really well. I showed you guys those um, towels, at the shop towels after I cleaned it. Then um, I uh, let it dry obviously and then I came back and sanded this one. This particular piece did need sanding. Most of the time with Dixie Belle chalk paint you don't have to necessarily sand because when you use your um, white lightning cleaner, it does degloss it, it cleans it, and it pretty much preps your piece. So when I mean degloss it, it also preps it kind of like a, um, I, clean with, I clean mine with a scotch Bright, and um, this is one of our white scotch brights, but I clean it with a scotch Bright, which also kind of sands your piece at the same time. So it's kind of like wet sanding at the same time um, as cleaning it. So you're getting three things accomplished. So I'm just kind of gonna recap uh, on that. That's how I got this piece to where it is. After I did clean it, I did have some, what I call orange peeling going on. And that orange peeling um, was due to heat most likely. And uh, so it kind of crinkled, if you will, the, uh, what do I say, the varnish that was on this piece. So I did have to knock that down. I did hit it with a 60 grit sandpaper and I did use my um, DeWalt sander for that. And um, so I knocked that down a little bit more because I, you would have seen that. If you can feel it with your hands, you're gonna see it with your eye when you put your paint on. So just kind of let you guys know that. So I just wanted to knock that down to a little bit smoother um, texture when you rub your hands over it. After I did all of that, then I cleaned it back down again, just with a damp cloth and a, um, and a shop towel. The reason I did that is because I wanted the dust off my piece and I don't want to um, paint in anything onto my piece that would have been dust in there. After I finished that, then I put our Dixie Belle Boss on. This is a bleed through, stop bleed through, and it stops odor, smells, and bleed through. So I did use Dixie Belle Boss. Now I put it in this Velo bottle, and um, but it comes in a regular um, paint can, and it comes in your um, eight ounce and 16 ounce sizes. So um, I did use that, and I used it in clear. That's why you can't tell that it's on here. It does also come in white. So um, in my instance, I'm using a dark color. So I didn't really want to have to paint over a white tone and paint over it with a dark. So that's why I always tend to use my clear. Unless I'm going to distress underneath of it and I want that white to pop through, kind of like you painted it and then you're distressing and that color's coming through. In that case, then I might have used a white boss. But most of the cases, I use our clear boss for that. So that's just kind of a rundown to where how we got to where we are right now. And um, I, I did give you guys a little information on what I was um, envisioning on this piece and we shall see if it's going to work that way or not. And uh, most of the time I'll come in and I'll paint the entire piece and then come back in and do some blending. But tonight I'm actually going to try go and um, work with my paint. Two different ways. I have a couple of different brushes on hand 
Um, I do have my Dixie Belle Oval Medium, which this will be the brush that I'll use for most of the blending. I'll paint with it, but also kind of catch some blending. And then I have another little mini brush. It's a two inch mini brush. It fits really well in the hand. As you can see, you can barely, it's not, you can tell it's very well loved. Um, that's the uh, Antebellum Blue. It is, the pigmentation on our antebellum is very strong. The pigment, I should say, is very strong. And so it will kind of, it can tend to stain your brushes. And you can even see it a little bit in this brush, even though I've cleaned it really well. So your pigment will be a little bit on the heavy side with the antebellum blue. I've noticed that with the Bunker Hill blues, with the blues, it's really strong pigment. So I was envisioning doing a couple of things. I am planning on using, um, that's the antebellum blue. It's a very bold, very uh, kind of a real dark blue, but it's, it's um, a very pretty color. And then I also have, I have a couple of colors here actually. So I have some kudzu color and I also have the palmetto. So I'm thinking I'm gonna blend in these colors into my antebellum. I'm just gonna play with it because, hey, you know what, we can. It's Thursday evening and um, we're all kind of, you know, staying at home and just doing little projects around the house, planting flowers, messing with chickens. If you hear, you probably can hear our babies behind me. They're cheeping away and um, they're keeping us company. They've been out at the little chicken house part of the day today and um, and now they're back in as the temperatures will drop so they have to come in and out um, when they're this young so they're only a um, we'll want to say maybe three three to four weeks old so they're still kind of young and then we have two very young babies over there so we are just kind of bringing them in back and forth and keeping them keeping them in the safe zone when it comes to temperature dropping so when I get started painting, I have, my brushes are dry and I will dampen them. This is my mist bottle and I do mist my brush. So I'm gonna mist my brush. I haven't made any decision as to put in, in, putting any um, embellishments on this piece because it has some engraving here, which you can see, and I'm gonna probably work that in as I go along with um, my design for this piece. So. Just kind of bringing you guys up to date on the piece, what I've done to it. And um, that's kind of my goal is to just kind of show you guys how we get where we, where we are and how these finishing pieces kind of come out. And so this is kind of the, the basics down at the, the bare bones part of this um, project. So we do have the, and I'm pushing these in. Yes, the hardware is not on here, but I can come back in with a, um, a round, what will I say, a round screwdriver. It'll come to me and pull these back out as I need to pull them out. But I'm just going to kind of have them in here so I can kind of see. You see it's got some beautiful detail. You can't see it as much right now as you're going to see it when I paint it and when I pop it out. Because on top of adding these paint colors, I'm also gonna come in here with some metallics. Of course, this will come after these metallics. So this is the Pacific, or excuse me, the Caribbean. Look how pretty. That's gonna be gorgeous over the antebellum blue. And then I have the um, deep woods. I call it deep woods moss. It's deep woods, and it's that green gold color. So once I put that on, I'm gonna come back in here and highlight with gilding wax. I would just bet you with some gold gilding wax over the top of this as well, just to kind of create some, a little bit more ump, probably here along the edges as well. But as I go along, I'll play with it. Um, but the metallics come after, let me grab. And I also have just a shop towel here with me. And I wanna see if I want to move you guys to where you're in a little bit, maybe you can see a little bit better here as to where I'm going. I normally always start down low and work my way up. So my, my thought process is to do the antebellum on the drawers, work my way up in the, with the antebellum, and maybe come in and hit the bones, the sides of this piece maybe with the green, and maybe that's where I'm headed. But 
Um, don't quote me on that because I can I always can change my mind as I'm starting to paint so if you are with me let me know you're here um, so that I can welcome you I'm probably gonna get on my knees because I always do and let me see I might can drop y'all down a little bit here so that you can see that we're gonna start down at the lower part of this piece let me see I might have you at the bottom here and so that's where I'm gonna start working because I always kind of work from the bottom and kind of find my way up with these colors. Now, you're gonna see this on the fly because that's just kind of how I'm gonna do this piece. Just been kind of visualizing it in my head and then I just kind of run with it. Now, the shop towel that I have here, it, it looks like it's dirty, but believe it or not, I have washed it and I will dampen it because I'm gonna use it to pull paint back off if I need to. So I'm gonna have one of them handy. And you also, let me just behind me here, reach and Now I am planning to embellish this with some floral designs, we're thinking down the road. So I'm also grabbing me some baby wipes just in case I need them. Cause baby wipes are great for pulling your paint back off if you want to. And like I said, most of the time I'll paint my whole piece and then come back in and um and change it up but for now we're just going i'm just going to run with it because you know hey it's thursday night it's something to do what have you guys been doing have you guys been working um out in your yard maybe like i have been i have been busy just kind of keeping busy doing different things around the home front doing weed eating and all that fun stuff. Grab one of these baby wipes because this is new and so I'm gonna get it on me. So this antebellum blue, it is a gorgeous color. And then I'm gonna put some of this palmetto. This one's already been opened um, in the workshops that we had been doing, which obviously we're not doing right now because of our stay in place issue kind of thing so but i did manage to get out some today and get some florals and work on a few things in my yard which i've been wanting to do and i have an apple tree out in the front yard and i'm gonna add some to that as well so this will be interesting coming in here and adding these different pops of green and this antebellum so we will see if I like it. A lot of times, like I say, I will um, add my add my separate colors second because then I kind of don't want to wash my paint back off. Sometimes when you are painting, if you're blending, say if I want to come in here and blend another color um, in with my blue, a lot of times I'll paint my, my primary color first and then come back in and work that blending technique in. But tonight, I thought, well, maybe it'll be fun, maybe I'll like it, maybe I won't, and just have a plethora of colors here to work with and see see how it goes. So, we'll just have fun with it, because we're all bored and we all need something to do. So, for me, that's going to be painting this piece. So, if you are new here, um, welcome. Thank you for joining me tonight. Um, you can uh, follow us on our Facebook page and you'll see how gorgeous. Now, um, I'm trying to think, did I take a picture of this piece? I'm not sure. I'm really bad about that, whether I took a piece before I get a picture before I get started because I'm just kind of running with it and painting. And so, obviously, I'm not going to wet my paint. Um, at this because this is the first coat and that's mostly why but i just want to kind of play with these colors just to kind of show you guys you can if you don't like it guess what you can always paint over it so um i'm just kind of gonna run with it make a vision a visual on how i was thinking i was going to go with this i might just bring this color there's no wrong or right way when you are working with something this, you'll see how different this piece is gonna look. So 
So it's definitely going to be pretty much like a brand new piece of furniture. I'm going to come in here with this antebellum. This is a gorgeous blue. I hope you guys can see this. I love this blue and it is gorgeous with a metallic over the top of it. When you start working your metallics, um, and I'm not sure if I'll, I know I'm not going to get onto it tonight because I like for my, my primary coats to be dry before I work in my metallic because your metallics go, um, go all the same direction when you're putting your metallics in. So this is kind of going to give me an idea of where my images are going to lay if I come in here and put images on this piece. But look how it goes from the transformation with the paint. It's just amazing. And of course you're going to get major coverage. Um, we always get pretty much one coat coverage with our paint. But because this is a heavy pigment color, it's going to obviously cover very nicely. So this is the antebellum color that we're putting in here. And i um, using a different brush. This is not one of my, I don't want to use my um, Dixie Belle. Let's see, I'm going to put the, um, the Kudzu Moss color on. It's definitely going just this is just going to be kind of for fun um, but we'll blend it because I'm just want to kind of get a feel anytime you're doing a different kind of art you're always just trying to get the feel for your piece and um, this brush brushes and paints just a little bit differently than um, your Dixie Belle brushes. It's still a, a decent brush. It's just, and I was painting with these all the time. I love how it's little. So I know you're probably thinking, what in the world? Where in the world is she going with this? But you shall see. I think it will be fun to blend some colors in here. You see, you see a lot of, um, and I'm not gonna worry too much about getting it on my antebellum because I can always come back in with my antebellum color and clean up what I've done, anything that I've done. And so I wanted to incorporate that color as well as bringing in some of this green. So this is a little bit darker color. This is the Palmetto. palmetto. So I'm just kind of playing with my colors and seeing which one I kind of like best with my antebellum. So I keep dipping into the Palmetto color. Let me just kind of blend this in. Now I will use my water. Hey Angela, hey Beth. So I will use my water when I am blending um, my palmetto with my kudzu color because I want to keep a wet, I want to keep a wet surface. So I want to kind of keep it wet as I'm going along. So this is the little darker green that I'm putting in. And I am planning on playing with my floral as well. So you see, I've kind of got my brushes set aside. And I'm just playing with my colors here to um, incorporate, see how I like them against this color. So you can always back it off, you can always add more, and you can always change your color. So it's nothing, nothing is set in stone when you're working with paint. And this is just that deeper green. I think I like the deeper green, which is the palmetto with this. I think they're gonna blend a little bit better. 
because remember this is going to have metallic over the top of it. So um, it's going to have that moss metallic as well as the Pacific, what I keep saying Pacific, I mean Caribbean color. So if you're just joining me, thank you for joining. Um, I am just working away here, blending, I'm going to be blending some colors together and just kind of playing in my paint tonight. Now I did spray my um, antebellum blue because of my brush being sitting there waiting for me to pick it back up. So I'm gonna come back up in here and I will be misting it just because I need to keep a wet edge. So I'm gonna come back in here and clean up my edge. So you can do this multiple ways. But for me, I just kind of come in here and play with my color and move it around where I want it. So if you want your blues and your greens to blend a little bit more and create more of a peacocky look, then um, you can just come in here and add that as you go. So as you see, I'm just gonna come in. Now this is my blue my antebellum blue, and I'm just gonna come in and kind of blend these two colors in to one another. And like I say, most of the time you'll see me kind of paint the whole all over piece, one color, and then um, come in and start doing some blending. So, but here I'm gonna do a combination just for the fun of it tonight. Hey, just because we can, right? We can do that. And so you can see how the green and the blue, now I was telling you, I have a um, cloth here with me and I'm gonna dampen it. And what I use it for is to pull paint back off if I wanna back my paint up, back it off a little bit with my blending. So just play with your paints and um, just kind of keep moving them around to get your blend color. And, like, and um, you can just kind of work it in. And if you feel that your paint is kind of sticking, um, just dampen your paint. It's water-based paint anyway, so you're gonna be able to blend those two colors. So I'm blending the, the Palmetto color and the Antebellum Blue. So that's what I'm doing, I'm kind of, backing off some of that green and blending the blue and the green together, if that makes sense. And it's kind of gonna create more of a peacocky feel. So you still see the undertone of the green, but the majority of it will be in the antebellum blue. So that's kind of what I'm trying to create. So just kind of blending those. They're both pretty strong pigment colors. So, and as you kind of blend them in, and that's where I will kind of back some of my paint off of my brush and then miss my brush, miss my area that I'm working, where I'm blending. So that's just kind of how I'm working it. A lot of people do it multiple different ways, but for me, and then just kind of wipe my brush off Grab my blue back, blend my blue back in. So this kind of this is kind of the approach that if you were doing it all at one time, majority of the time, like I said, I will paint, and when I paint, I will keep my keep my paint one color at a time, and then come back in on the second coat and blend in. But I'm just kind of giving you guys the overall idea for blending as well. So. so it's a little bit time consuming, but it'll be kind of a unique look that you wouldn't normally see. You're not gonna see in every piece, let's just say like that. You're not gonna go to every store and see a piece that looks exactly like this one because it's you know completely um, unique in its own right with its paint. So 
kind of showing you how I'm just kind of bringing the green and the blue together. And then I'm going to come back in um, after this broadcast and I will be, I hope you guys can see this. You let me know if you can, hopefully you can, sorry, I'm going to bobble you a little bit where you can see the colors are kind of blending from the green up into the blue. And so when, um, when this dries and I come back in and I add this color um, around the feet and around the, I call this the bones and, and, or the ribs and the bones of the piece, then you're going to see this on the green areas and then you're going to see the uh, Caribbean. Look at that metallic, isn't that beautiful? On the blue areas. So it's going to be definitely different, different and unique. And um, of course, that's always the goal. I try not to create the exact same piece every time I create a piece. And definitely, um, I'm one for the uniqueness of it. So I definitely want to keep it um, unique. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to get this leg over on here and start bringing it into the same color pattern. Now, um, they will, it will vary as you go along, but you know, any, any piece of artwork that you do is gonna vary as you go along, as you start blending your colors in, and um, that's okay. But um, I really like mixing and blending my colors and um, making the piece um, super unique to itself and um, not exactly the same to other pieces out there. That's always my goal. So I'm gonna go ahead. Uh, I'm not misting here until, until I get my color on. And so this is the antebellum I'm coming in with right now. So we'll go over that again. We'll bring this back in, because this is our main body of our piece that we're working in. And you can see um, the detail on these pieces are, um, where this uh, area is that you're seeing come through. And with those areas, I'm going to, I think I'm going to anyway, incorporate a transfer, which was the Rose Celebration. Let me, my glasses are terrible. So let me see if I can see. How are you ladies doing? What are you doing to stay busy? I know we're all just kind of like crawling out of our skin, ready to get going. Um, let's just get society back up and running. I'm, I'm ready to rock and roll. A couple of weeks, um, I've had plenty of time to catch up on. Now, this piece has a couple of imperfections on it. As you can see, I didn't take every single little nook, um, a little gnar out of it, and, um, but that's okay because I'm gonna have a transfer that I'm gonna be implementing on here as well in different places. And so I'm not overly worried about it. Sometimes I like for some of the scars to come through because they show what this piece has been through. Just like all of us, any good lady has always got a few scars on her. You know, um, that we don't get through life without having a few battle scars. So um, this old gal is gonna have her share. And um, I don't try to, uh, unless it's a structural issue, I don't always try to fix them. I don't try to fix every imperfection on the piece because I feel like it just adds a little bit of character to this each individual piece. So this is the antebellum blue. You see how lovely it goes on. So it's gonna be a bluish green. It's really gonna be different, really unique and different. And I'm going to keep going because I am going to kind of come in along the bone part of it and keep the bone part with the green. So I'm going to continue going on with my antebellum blue. And I'm going to point you guys up a little bit more so you guys can see where we're headed here. So I'm just working on, and this is the main area. You see this beautiful detail here? You couldn't see it before, obviously. I don't think you could see it like you're going to now. And I'm gonna bring some green in on that too, because look at that gorgeous piece right there that was on here. You couldn't really see it. Let me pull you up. See, you couldn't really, maybe I can get you guys there. Let me put you here for a sec. That way you guys can kind of see how gorgeous this this trim is on this piece. 
So I'm okay with not having it filled completely with the paint because I'm going to come in and I'm going to add some of the green in there. So it's okay to not have it absolutely perfect in there. And so when I go to add my green, I will be misting my brush again because my green brush right now is sitting and waiting for me to pick it up. So that's why I need to add my water because water's your friend when you're working with chalk paint, water-based chalk paint. It's your friend and you want to utilize it because it'll help your blending. It'll help your paint go on nice and smooth. And this is going to have a whole new character to this piece. And so that's what you're gonna you're gonna be seeing kind of come out in this piece and here is the second rail which is this is just gorgeous to this piece I love the railing on this the minute I saw it so that's why I wanted to incorporate some of our metallics because I want to highlight those um, natural detail to this piece so this is the antebellum blue that's going on right now. Let me kind of tilt you guys up here. I may have to pick the camera up higher too, but we're gonna work on the sides of that as well. And I'll back you back off so you can see as I bring that green back in. So mostly my whole front part of my piece is going to be in the antebellum blue but and then we'll be incorporating our our green colors and i will be remisting yep let me set you guys up a little bit set my brush down hopefully i can pull you guys back up let's see here Maybe. There we go. Sorry about that. Bobbling y'all around. Put you back where y'all can see. And we'll go some more here. So this is the antebellum. I'm going to go ahead, get this where I need it to be. And then I want to get back onto our green and start putting our green back in these sides. So this is kind of a fun little challenge. Hey, if you're home, which a lot of us are, and you're just trying to find something to do, and you have an old chest of drawers that your grandmother passed down to you, or your mom, or somebody, and you've been looking at it, and you've seen before we started what this piece looked like, and you've been thinking of doing something and bringing some change to that piece, and you're just going stir crazy with being inside, grab a brush and um, let your talents just kind of flow. And you would be surprised what you will come up with, with a couple of good colors of paint, a paint brush, and a little time on your hands right now. So we all have a little time on our hands right now. So that's my antebellum. You've watched me kind of put that on. And now I'm gonna come in with my kudzu color. I hope you guys can kind of see the color here. I know the light's kind of shining on it as it's wet. And let me push my antebellum out of the way and I'm gonna come back in here. I am gonna take my brush. I am gonna mist it <coughs> because it's been sitting there waiting on us. And so I wanna get in here, <coughs> excuse me, and add my green in because we were going up the sides with this color. And so I'm going to miss my paint so that I can blend it in. And that's when I'll have to come back in and use my antebellum blue to kind of clean up my edges from where I want to blend these two colors together. So that's when I'll come in and dampen it again using my and bring that that green and blue together if that makes sense kind of bringing those two joining them sort of together in that color so this is exactly how i do it and um, most likely it's how it's being done 
If you're doing it at the same time, I'll bring you over here so you can see this edge as we're coming in. So I'm gonna mist it because it's been sitting, so it's a little on the dry side. Because our paint dries relatively quick. It's a chalk mineral paint, so it's gonna dry rather quickly. So I'm gonna come in here and keep it misted so I can bring my colors together. That's key when you're working with the wet, with wet paint. You keep your paint wet. This is the green. I'm just kind of bringing it in. I don't need it to be overpowering. I just want it to have um, the undertone so that it will play in with my antebellum. They really blend nicely when you kind of come in and blend them together. So that's what I'm wanting out of this. And I'm gonna do that on the sides of my piece because I really like that blend look. So it kind of looks like I was thinking of going along with this piece and putting the florals on it, but the more I'm doing it, I'm really thinking kind of peacocky. So the peacock color is kind of coming into me for some reason, and I do have a peacock transfer. So I may come in and think about incorporating that. I was going somewhere else, but sometimes I get derailed thinking as I keep working my paint, and where I really think I want to go with it. So, you know, it's that's the great thing about when you are painting and you're doing your chalk paint, you can always change up. And I'm known for that. I'm known for coming in here and having one idea in my head and by the time the night is over, the piece is kind of talking to me and we kind of blend back and forth. So we shall see. That will be a stay tuned and see where we end up with that. But there's a good possibility that I may come in there and incorporate that peacock floral that I have. Wouldn't that be interesting with that color? That would definitely be interesting. I'm gonna clean up this edge right here. So just remember you can always kind of come back in and add your, your antebellum which is what's on this piece, on this right now. Now I'm gonna come in here along this rail. You can see where it's kind of dried up and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna mist it. Once I find where I left my mister bottle, up on the top. There's where I left it. And I wanna come in and I'm just gonna mist that rail and I'm gonna walk in here with some of this green. So you see it kind of in there. You can see it's incorporating very much peacocky. So uh, you can just envision that moss and that metallic on there. I know, I don't know if you guys can see it like I see it, but that metallic is going to be gorgeous in there. I think my lighting might be off in here with you guys because I do have a light in the background that's probably shining on here. And that would be the baby chick's light because they still have to have their light. And I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna incorporate some of this green. And I'm gonna clean it back up with my antebellum brush once I get my color in where I want it. So I am just kind of flowing with this piece as it speaks to me. I'm just kind of going along with it and adding this, this really cool, this, this palmetto color. That's the color I'm putting in here right now. But it's, I'm amazed at how nice the peacock, excuse me, the antebellum, and the, uh, I told you Peacock was speaking to me, that the color of antebellum and this, this green and how well they flow in together. So I'm just gonna kinda come in here and blend it a little better. Blend it in so they kinda marry together that peacock, the color look, give it that peacocky look. Cause I really like the way the green and the blue are um, coming in. I'm gonna clean this up. I got some antebellum on my brush. And if I made where I got a little green on the drawer, come in here and clean it back up. So yes, I am using both colors at the same time. That's why I have my rag, knocking some of that green, whatever color that I don't want on with my rag back off. And then coming in here and cleaning up the edge with my antebellum. And that way you can see the green, but we're gonna clean up the edge of the drawer. 
And you don't have to. You can leave it kind of that way so it kind of looks like, you know, but for me, I'm just going to kind of come in here and clean it up because I want the green where I want the green and I want the, the bluish color where the blue is. I think I'm going to, I'm really going to enjoy the mixture of these two colors. I'm just kind of playing them on, playing, playing in them. So don't be afraid to just grab your brush and allow allow some creativity to see where you can go with it because it's really kind of fun and um, I hope you all can kind of see I know it's really hard in this lighting to kind of see how the green and the blue are blending in together and I can't wait to come in and pop some of this moss color Look how gorgeous that color is I don't know if you guys can see that like I can but I, I can just envision this over the green and then uh, this metallic. So I'm gonna play in these colors. So it's really gonna be interesting. So you'll have to stay tuned to see how we incorporate that on there. And I, if you noticed, I just came in here and I pretty much eliminated the, um, the kudzu color because it's way lighter than I like for it to be. I really like the, the darker tone. So I did end up staying with the palmetto and look how green that is see how green it's almost like our evergreen is a tad lighter i think i have it here so here's our evergreen color and then the palmetto but i really like the palmetto working with that antebellum and this is your antebellum so these are the two colors that i'm working with and blending together so you can kind of see even in the jar how wonderful they would um, mix and you could you know 50 50 these and you know blend your own color that way but I kind of like the idea of just coming in here and blending it and let it cure and dry where it will and then come back in and highlight with the green this will be a very interesting piece in the in the sunlight you'll be able to see um, how these these uh, colors um, marry into one another so that's basically what I'm doing tonight. I'm gonna go ahead probably on the sides and continue get my sides done and um, also my top. And um, when we come back the next time, um, next Tuesday um, at 8 p.m., you'll see uh, kind of where we got with this. And you can always um, jump over on our blog. I'm sure I've been trying to go on our blog and get you know the different projects out there as well and, and a little bit more rundown of what exactly we've done to them. So um, we thank you for viewing with us tonight and being part of our broadcast. We um, hope that um, we can help you somehow when you're doing your blending. And if you have any questions, just let me know. I'll be more than happy to work with you on that. And um, the ladies up at uh, Cooper's Vintage Village and the Nook and Cranny both, if you are interested in picking up any paint for any of your projects, you guys can still do that. We are um, doing, you know, obviously the stay safe, the six feet apart, that sort of thing, but um, we can still get those products to you. You can message and um, they will meet you and go from there. So if you need anything while you're at home, um, don't hesitate to ask us. We'd be more than happy to help you guys with that so that you can get those projects done since you're home. And um, uh, if you are um, following our page, we thank you for uh, doing that. Thank you for sharing, liking, and commenting. Um, we appreciate that as well. And we hope to see you guys back here next Tuesday at 8 o'clock. So until then, you guys have a very blessed weekend. Everyone stay safe. And hopefully we'll be all joined back together here very soon. Have a very blessed evening, everyone. Bye for now. Bye-bye.